Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. Today we are taking a look at the K104 Pro that's available on Boye Store. Um, does look like it has a screen and a knob on it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. All right, before we take a look at the keyboard, I do like to check out what's inside of the box. And here we have actually a very nice manual, though it's only printed on one side. It's very glossy. Um, the stock, paper stock, is some of the thicker stock used. Oh, cool. We have some extra keys. Um, these are die sub PVT key caps. And it looks like we can add some color to what looks like a standard keycap set, or the, the standard, DMK standard, I believe. We have two extra switches. And let's check out what these are. Oh, wow. These are actually branded boy so he's getting his own switches made as well we have a five pin switch we have the th what looks like the thin pins this sh should fit otemu's sockets no ping it appears to be a long pull by just probably a 3.8 millimeter travel it is a medium weight probably 45 maybe 50 grams and it has a nice sharp bottom out i usually like would say include one extra switch per like 15 or 20 um because we've got a whole 104 key keyboard here two switches is kind of low but at least they include it I've, there's more keyboards that i review that don't have extra switches than do so thank you at least for including it and finally, we also have a nicely nylon braided USB-A to USB-C cable with the, the, uh, the ferrite magnet. And here we are with the Boye K104 Pro. Thankfully, we do have a dust cover. As I have been bringing this up more and more, I've been seeing keyboards arrive to me with dust covers. Um, I know it sounds minimal, but if you want your keyboard to last longer, keep it covered up when you're not in use. Um, I'm sure many of you have, you know, gone to your windowsill or surface that you just haven't touched in a while. Maybe a windowsill that's behind a couch or behind your headboard or your bed. And then, you know, just be a couple of months and you go to it and you wipe your fingers across. You'll pick them up and you'll find that there's a whole bunch of just stuff on your hands, dust, dirt stuff that's just in the air probably a bunch of mites dead bodies in there that you couldn't see you could put that under a microscope you'd see the amount of just trash microscopic but trash that's just all in the air that's going to land because of gravity it's going to land on surfaces when it gets to keyboards it's going to get underneath underneath the pcb you know, underneath where the switch and the pcb connect into the switch itself into the stabilizers and is going to shorten the life of your keyboard. Now, I'm not saying that if you use a, a desk cover, it's gonna protect it, you know, and it's gonna last 20 years. I mean, a lot depends on how well the keyboard is made, but if you protect it, you take care of your electronics, it will last as long as it can last based on its quality of manufacturing. So whenever you have a chance if you do have a dust cover i recommend saving them and using them on your keyboards when they're not in use they will last you longer anyway so we see that it is a kind of a cheaper one though it is well formed so that we have the knob and everything in here and let's take a look at this keyboard this is definitely retro though well, it does look to be uh that might be cherry Oh, yeah, that's a cherry profile. Well, that's a bit of grease if I ever seen some. Uh, all right. All right. So let's check out these stabilizers. First, though, let's see how thick these keycaps are. 1.5 millimeters. Now, that's nice for a budget um, keyboard for it to have die sub pbt i've actually I, when i first started i don't know why i thought double shot is just better now granted double shot pbt i think is better than abs abs 
Not that I mind it all that much, but on some keycap sets, it, it, when it starts shining, it's just, eh. Especially because it's no longer uniform. I just know that I have come to find that PBT, dye sub PBT, especially the thicker, will deliver more of a deeper tone on the keyboard than will a thinner, especially ABS keycap. But even the double shot PBTs, I think, are a little bit deeper. Anyway, so we've got a nice thick keycap here. For the stabilizers, we have definitely got what I would say is a little too much lubrication. I would take these out. Not going to do it for the stock sound test today, but when I come back to it, I will probably take these out, clean them up, and re-lube them because that is just way too much lubrication. They are literally swimming in lube. There's no reason for them to have... I mean, there's literally just a gob of... I thought it was... First, when I, th when I first saw it, I thought it was actually like um, a Teflon tape for the plumber's mod. But it is just a lot of lubrication. You know, as I was stating earlier about the dust cover... This is one of those things with all that dust in the air, with all this extra lubrication, it'll get in there and it'll turn to like a mud and will make the stabilizer sluggish and start sticking. I grease all over my hands just from handling it. Um, thankfully, that's that's an easy fix. That's not something that's like, uh, oh, oh, well. Um, on the PCB here, we can see that we have PET layer above the PCB, as well as the IXP layer above the PET layer. And it feels like we have some sort of, could be poron foam below the PCB. The screen protector does come with a protective cover over here, and we're not gonna take it off just yet. I'm gonna wait till I actually get a chance and I'm gonna cut out a screen protector for it. Feels like it could be an all palm switch but i'm just not quite sure i'll have to see if i can find any specs on that and we also do have what appears to be a pc plate though it appears to be black or dark doesn't seem to be transparent there does seem to be uh what i would guess is poron between the plate and the pcb and you can also tell we are on a gasket mount it's definitely pretty flexy this enter key definitely you can hear that over amount of lubrication on there so but like i said i will fix that when i come back to it where right now we're just doing the, the stock review and sound test well, I got to say, uh, take it a look at it. We definitely have um, the retro vibe. I would have gone a little bit more IBM, and I would have, I know they include some extra keycaps. So we do have optional Mac keys and Windows keys as well. I don't know why the extra sub legends are on the control keys when they included extra control keys. I'm not quite sure of the thinking behind the um, the extra keycaps, but at least we get extra keycaps. There's a lot that a lot of sets that do not have extra keycaps. This at least gives us the option to customize just that little bit more and truly make this a keyboard that's customized for us. For the knob, we do have a D knob. Looks to be the standard six millimeter. This is actually nice and knurled. I want to guess that it's aluminum, but it feels kind of heavy. It could actually be steel, but it has that plastic collar screwed in with a regular screw. But that is actually a decent knob. I wish there was more knurled knobs. This knob in particular reminds me of the Keychron knobs. That hi fi layers, the um, PET and the IXP really do help bring some life to this keyboard. 
Now plugging in the RGB, it looks like we have some nice diffusion with the switches. Um, with the South Basic PCB, I was kind of hoping that the plate was going to be doing some diffusing as well, but it is not. I'll have to come back to it when I go to uh, open it up and take a look at what's in there and see if it's actually a black plate or if it's the foam in between that's actually causing uh, the plate not to fluoresce. But despite that, we actually are, I can see the lights pretty good. We have a pretty simple display. We're going to have to take a look at the software real quick so that we can go ahead and update um, the date and the time. And I'm going to have, oh, so that's like a power button. Although it doesn't show the mode. I'm definitely going to have to take a look at the software, but just taking a look off of it, I got to say the keys are pretty good. I don't like the broken up legends um, like on the print screen the scroll lock the pause break there was different ways that it was done previously but it, if it's going to be retro it'd be nice if it actually followed some of those themes um, I don't like that it actually has the Mac modifiers and the control here because you do actually have Mac keys these are all pretty minuscule um, little nitpicks really I do like the sub legends that we have on here so we know that what they are mapped to as far as the volume, the mute, we've got the Bluetooth connections over here, uh, the 2.4, uh, that would be 2.4, that would be USB, um, the power button right there. Let's check out this dongle here. Ah, so... <laughs> The entire radio transmitter is in that white plastic part. But I do like the fact that they've given us here both a USB-C and a USB-A receiver, or at least an end on either end, because there's a lot of keyboards nowadays that don't even have the USB-A port anymore. So, um, and I don't think it's an issue anymore, but when USB-C ports first start getting added to keyboards, they actually forgot to... Um, use on a lot of the PCBs a, I want to say pin 5, I forget what pin it is specifically, so that it can't overvolt, but I think they've taken care of that, because basically there was just some keyboards back when the port C's first started coming out that were overcharging and overvolting the batteries or overvolting the PCBs and frying, but I think that's an issue of the past. Again, I like that they're 1.5 millimeters thick, and I do like the, that they have the extra, I'd call them soft legends. Um, they're kind of like, they're not really sub legends. Um, the font though, on some of these keys just seems a little off to me. But then again, we can always get our own keycap set. Uh, the closest this one would be, would be the 9009. Um, there's plenty of 9009 keycap sets out there if we wanted to you know, perhaps go with something different, we would just lose the ability to have those sub-legends that give us the uh, functionality that's hidden underneath the layer. All in all, though, I've got to say that this is one of the nicer 100% I've seen. Now, I do have a whole slew of full-size keyboards coming to me over the next few weeks. Um, it seems that a lot of people are <laughs> kind of gone, it's gone in a cycle. I mean, it for the longest time, it was full size. Then the TKLs came out. TKLs were very popular for a while there. Since then, it's kind of just gone from let's go smaller, smaller, smaller. Now let's go a little bit bigger. Now people are like, if I'm using anything that's a TKL or smaller, I'm I've got a numpad next to me. One because my numpad has a volume, so I don't have to worry about the keyboard having a knob. But now it seems that after the craze of going all the way down, even to like 40% keyboards and smaller. Now, some people, more so than I've seen in the few years that I've really been into the hobby, are now saying, I want a full-size keyboard. I think it's probably a lot of people that are just newer coming in, finding out that there is this whole new world with keyboards, and they're just like, well, I'm used to a full-size, and that's what I have the space for, and that's what I want. So full-sizes are definitely starting to come, make a comeback. Um, not only that, 1800s, 98% are also becoming quite popular. Um, one of which I've got 
coming soon. I should say that I got full size and 1800s coming to review. Uh, a full size, I mean, an 1800 really. So even though an 1800 is not a full size, it is closer to the size of a TKL, as we can see here. If we cut it off here, we're really only losing this one column right here. But it's basically the footprint of a TKL. But we have practically everything we need. We don't have this navigation cluster. And then these are going to be spread out across all the extra layer keys that we have. But obviously, this one's a key crown, so we could program it, you know, however way we want. We could make these three print screens, scroll lock, and pause break if we wanted, since we already have a knob on here. But, um, yeah, this is what I was talking about. This is my DCX set, and you can see the shine on there. And it's quite uneven, because some keys are shining way more than others. And it's just not, not that pleasant to look at. That's why I prefer PVT when I have a choice. I don't even really look for abs keycaps anymore if i if i see abs i'm immediately like no nope, or let me see if they have it in pbt so as far as a full size keyboard goes i've got to say this one is pretty good for what we've got here if you're looking for a full size keyboard please try to get one with a gasket mount i think that especially if all you've ever used are tray mount keyboards this being a gasket mount you're going to find that Typing on this is so much more comfortable. And if you ever do experience, like I do, pain in the wrist and the hands, um, it's not going to happen as quickly. I can code much longer on a gasket-mounted keyboard than I can on a tray-mounted, especially a steel plate, because it's basically, there's no give. So it's almost like you're pounding your fingers into concrete. Um, now, granted, your desk could have a little bit of give. Your desk mat could have a little bit of give. Um, that's going to help, but at the keyboard, at the point where your finger is actually striking, that force is going all the way down and up your hands. And I'm not a doctor or anything. I just know from personal experience, I can type about twice as long on a gasket-mounted keyboard before feeling any strain or pain in my hands as compared to when I'm typing on a tray-mounted steel plate keyboard. So if you're going to be doing a lot of typing, gasket-mounted plates are definitely the way to go uh, because it's going to be a much softer, pleasant, and non-painful way to type. So I know, you know, they say retro and pretty much it's just the, the, the fact that this is beige. And we've got the 9009 keycap set on here. Obviously, there was no screens or knobs on keyboards back in the day. And while this doesn't, you know, have like the layout, of say a Model M or a Model F, which I would love to see. I mean, I don't, I don't see why they can't, you know, make them look like that with the round um, knobs on the side for the feet to kick out. Um, I'd really like to see. I don't know. I mean, if those patents, I don't know if they've expired or not. But I would like to see some more retro stuff. I'm a kid of the '80s. I grew up on this stuff, so I really like it. I know some people prefer, you know, anything but retro, and that's fine. But I really do like the retro touch that we've been seeing with a lot of the keyboards as of late. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Boyi K104 Pro. A three mode full size keyboard with a customizable screen and metal knob. This keyboard is a gasket mounted PC plate keyboard with a south facing three and five pin hot swap compatible PCB that includes high fine layers and is well dampened. It is preloaded with Boyi Palm Jadeite green high fine linear switches and 1.5 millimeter thick die sub PBT keycaps in the cherry profile and the 9009 colorway. The chin of this keyboard sits at 24 millimeters while the back sits at 33 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of five degrees. Flipping out the first set of included feet will raise the back to 36 millimeters, changing your angle of typing to eight degrees. Flipping out the final set of fold out feet will take the back height to 42 millimeters and your typing angle to 11 degrees. This keyboard is equipped with a 4,000 milliamp hour capacity battery and comes weighing in at approximately 1,045 grams. The MSRP for this keyboard is 6789 
after a $5 coupon on Amazon.com. All right, so um, download the software. We go to boyekeyboard.com and click on the download link, which will take you to the software driver page. The driver for this 104 is down at the bottom, so you can just go ahead and either hit page down a few times or hit end to get down to the bottom of the page, and then you can go ahead and download the Boye K104 Pro software driver. Installation is fairly standard. It does have an option to open immediately after installation, which I selected. Once installed, we're greeted by the lighting screen. We have other settings. I wanted to take a look at the uh, screen. So there does seem to be spots. Um, I don't know why it's called Game 1 and Game 2, but then you have a drop down of Custom 1 and Custom 2. But I went ahead and selected some slightly heavier uh, gifts, but they do work on other keyboards. Um, one is the Show Me the Money Jerry Maguire animation. And the other one is the, the math meme um, one. Now, to import it into the software application, it was fairly quick and straightforward. But uploading uh, to the keyboard did take a little bit longer than I expected. I At one point, it was just sitting there at 0%, and I thought that it had stuck, but nothing was spinning like it was crashed or anything. So I gave it time. And eventually it moved from the 0% and then actually started uploading. But it still took quite some time. I'm going to assume it's doing some CRC checking, making sure it doesn't have any bits or bytes out of the way or corrupted before it uploads them all. Under other settings, we have Windows Lock. We can do the exchange keys or the arrow keys, WASD, um, which I don't think it's really necessary on a full size, but some people may still like WASD. As far as the macros, um, you can create create macros and record type keystrokes and everything. Now we do have one function layer. Um, so you can set, you, if you select function set, you'll be able to select functions or you'll be able to map the underneath layer, at least for the keys that are not already pre-mapped, which isn't a good, which isn't too many because we are dealing with a full-size keyboard. So it's really only like the lighting controls and everything that have already pre predefined keys. But we can go ahead and map for all any of the ones that are not mapped for their layer on, underneath. Now for the lighting, we have the ability to select any one of the 18, I believe, effects that it has pre-included, or we can also do custom, and that allows us to do the per key RGB, which I know a lot of people, um, it's one of the, if not the most, it's probably one of the most questions that I have asked about keyboards. When somebody is asking me and querying me about a particular keyboard and does it have per key RGB? So um, this one does. Now it looks like the software and the firmware are both up to date. So there's no need to update that, but usually that cog, that settings cog in this type of software, I've seen the software before. There's about five or six standard like packages that most companies use. Now, some companies have developed their own, like Akko Amonsky Cloud Driver, but a lot of these other ones, boy, I know he is a smaller shop, but he has grown a lot, especially over the last year. Um, so he's probably buying these already kind of prepackaged. Uh, you know, maybe he provides a logo and a couple of names, you know, like the model name and everything. And that's how they customize both the stickers on there, the box, as well as the software. All right, so we're gonna take a real quick look at the screen here. All right, so I know that I had it on a back, or it was dark mode, because when I'd go to the screen, this was all dark and the numbers were in white. But for a few seconds, it takes me to volume control. But if I press and hold back, it takes me back here though, press and hold again. See, it goes into dark mode, but it's volume. So I'm kind of confused as to how that's supposed to work, but we have, um, when you're in the menu setting, you can select the gift selection and 
that's one thing about uh, some of these screens because of the way that they're made they don't have necessarily the best viewing angles that's why i like it when they have a little bit of a tilt because here i mean this is flat without the feet out but if i do extend the feet it's at least going to be a little bit more oh, i guess i have to select it all right so if i select the gif and then it's playing it, but I can continue to scroll through here. Oh, basically, this just allows me to scroll through both of the GIFs. That's it. All right, so the interface on this is a little buggy. This may be their first revision for this particular model. So I'm going to assume there might be some updates coming because it's just a little odd how this thing works. So if we go to backlight set, RGB bright, RGB speed, RGB mode. So we can scroll through the different modes here, though, and it just takes us back. So we can set connection. Right now we are in USB. That's what that symbol means. We can do OS, Mac, but this button is a, when the light is on, you're in Mac mode. When it's off, you're in Windows mode. Now we do have the time and the time is correct. We don't have a date. But we have one, which means NumLock is on. N is for NKRO. I may have turned that off inadvertently when I was testing because there was a button in the settings for the software to turn it on or off. Anyway, right now this keyboard is available for $68 after a $5 coupon. And what is available right now in stock has just blossomed over the last year. And uh, even a year ago, you would not have found as good of a full-size keyboard heck it was hard to find an in-stock gasket mounted keyboard but there was a few but very few a handful at the most gasket mounted full-size keyboards now we're getting a not only gasket mount but with screen with a knob um, it, it's just it continues to blow me away best i could call this is hi-fi Because there's a lot of nice tones in there. It's a very pleasant mix of deeper, mid, and just a little bit of high range. It just makes for a lovely sound profile that I think the majority of the people enjoy. Not everyone. You can't please all the people all the time. But for this price, what you get, I think it's a pretty good deal. Um, again, full-size keyboards are starting to make a comeback. Um, I do hope that they're going to do some further working of that uh, screen software. But I do think that a lot of people that are starting to come into the hobby, they're looking for full-size keyboards. I've talked to several people that I've helped, you know, get into it. And, you know, they get a tray mount keyboard and they're like, okay, well, this is no different. But then they try a gasket mount keyboard and they're like, oh, oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> I get what everybody's talking about. And if you haven't typed on one, it, you, you just have to experience it. I mean, I could try to explain it with every adjective available in a couple of languages that I know. It's still not going to transfer the actual experience until you try it for yourself. Um, you know, because even with my kids, they, they all started out with, you know, cheaper uh, tray mount keyboards. And when I switched them all out one at a time, two gasket mounted keyboards they're like no i really like my old keyboard but you're just use just 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 type a paragraph for me and they'd be like oh, all right fine but i want that keyboard and you could almost see the change in their face as they were like no okay this one's nice can i just make it look like that one <laughs> so usually a keycap change wasn't in, in, in place but everyone i've never had anyone that i've been like okay here's this tray mount and here's a gasket mount and I've never had a single individual that I've done that to. And I've done that to probably more people than I should. I've, I've basically become the keyboard guy, but that's a whole other story. But I hand somebody, you know, a tray mount keyboard that may be tuned and it sounds nice. You know, it feels nice. Oh, I like this keyboard. This is nice. Hand them something extremely similar, but gasket mount. And then they're like, wait a minute. Why is this so much nicer? Like, especially if I don't explain to them, you know, the differences at first which i do do that i've had a couple friends yeah immediately they're like wow this is soft like wait a minute this this has give 
But some people, they're, they can't quite put their fingers on it when they first start typing on it. They are like, huh, this, this feels better, but why? They don't, they're not really, I mean, they're, they're, they know they're feeling something different, but they can't quite pinpoint what it is. And it is that fact that you have that gasket mount, you have that soft typing. Anyway, not to get off into the weeds as I I'm tend to do. Um, I think that this is a great value. I don't think we would have seen anything at this value even a year ago. Um, it definitely has that retro feel. It could have been a little bit more retro. Um, I definitely would have gone with a really thick uh, beige cable as well, though at least they did include a nylon. I like the nylon braided uh, USBs personally, uh, but there's no coil. I would have done it all coil, but that's that's something that I think would have just added that much more of that retro touch. But the keyboard itself, it's interesting. It's nice. It has some extra keys so that we can customize it. You know, it has some interesting features in as far as having the, the ability to set the gifts. Um, and it is a three mode keyboard that also has a USB-A and USB-C. So if you're a road warrior and you still want your full keyboard, well, here you go. Um, weighs less than 1.5 uh, kilos so it's not very heavy it's i mean obviously it's a little bit bigger so you're probably going to need a bigger bag to put it in but it should fit in most backpacks um and there are cases on amazon for full-size keyboards but i've got to say i personally i like it and i'm actually going to switch it out and i'm going to use it for a day or so as my daily driver and see what i think about it and um like I said, in the future, I will come back to this. We'll open it up. We'll see how it's built on the inside. I think the majority of people, if they were to purchase this keyboard, they're going to be happy with it, especially if they already like the aesthetic and everything else is just going to fall right into place. They're, they're, there's not much to be unhappy with right now, except for a little bit of quirks that comes with the screen, which can be fixed with a firmware update. And for me, those are just nitpicky that they broke up the... Uh, the legends for the those modifier keys the navigation modifier keys other than that it's really not that big of a deal to me i think like i said majority of people if they purchase this keyboard they'd be happy with it i i'm like i said i'm going to use it and it may end up staying on my desk longer than intended because the for the time that i've been using it during production of this review I've actually quite enjoyed it. I'm like, ah, you know, I just, in my head, for some reason, I think full size, I think it just, my head just automatically kind of, I guess, assumes it's going to be tray mount, assumes it's going to be hard, assumes a lot of things. And as soon as I touch it, I'm like, oh, no, that's not, that, that sounds pretty good. So, um, you want retro, you need wireless, Road Warrior, 4,000 milliamp hour batteries. I'm not sure how long you'll get as far as lifetime. Everyone uses a keyboard different. Anytime anybody asks me how long will this last, it's like, I don't know. You don't use the keyboard like I do. You know, we're, we're two different people. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you wonderful folks with a stock sound test of the Boy Yi K104 Pro. I do hope that you enjoyed my review. A like, a subscribe really does go a long way. So for now, I'll just wish you wonderful people an awesome day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.